Hi guys, welcome back to our discussion about coral reefs. So I, we ended up the other day talking about other organisms that help to build the reef material. I just thought it would be kind of interesting to show you some pictures that I've taken of some of the critters that do that. Um, sponges, hydroids, bryozoans, those, those organisms that help to form reef material. They, they take calcium carbonate out of the water and form a skeleton of some kind or other that helps build up hard material on the reef. So let me show, oh, uh, okay. So, so these are sponges. Um, this is my buddy Mark, but, but these are sponges. They help to build material for the reef. Um, this is a, this is diadema. It's a kind of sea urchin, and these spines and this shell. They call it a test. We'll we'll learn that when we get to Echinodermata, but but this shell or test and these spines are made of calcium carbonate, and they help to build material as well. Um, this is a, a a clam that's glued to the to the coral itself, and and this red stuff, this pink stuff is actually a coral and algae that all help to build the reef. Um, you saw these uh, when we talked about other things, but th these are Christmas tree worms, um, and they produce a calcium carbonate tube in the coral head, so they also help to build the reef up. Um, this is fire coral. We've seen different pictures of this. These are the, these are the little um, polyps or, or zooids we call them, um, that, that build this skeleton. And this is hard. It's, it's calcified. So it, it helps, again, build reef material. Okay, so let's talk about how the reef builds. We start out with a hard substrate, a hard bottom, something like rock that has to be there so the corals can grow on it. The coral polyp will settle down and start to populate an area and it starts to cover the 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 bottom the the substrate as time goes by pieces of coral and parrotfish poop you know the sand that when the coral when the parrotfish eats the coral um builds up at the bottom on the hard substrate and so what happens is um, organisms over time glue this together by making their own skeletons. As they do that, the coral rises above the, the, the rubble and, and this, let me see if I can do this, this whole area here is now because of biogenous, you know, it, it's, it's formed by living things. So all from, from here to here, is because of the corals and other uh, organisms that we've been talking about that build the coral reefs up. And this just continues to grow. And as it does, as it does, the coral reef develops. So let's talk about how coral reefs develop. Um, well, the way that it works is some something happens like a, an underwater volcano or, or some kind of a um, uh, an event happens, forms an underwater mountain that breaks the surface. Pretty much a uh, volcanic island, right? And so what happens is it forms that hard surface. Remember we said that coral needs to be in shallow, warm water? Well, if this volcanic island is formed in tropical areas, it forms this hard, rocky, substrate for the corals to grow on and the corals fringe the outside of you know the around the edge of the island and they call that a fringing reef and a fringing reef is the first stage in the development of coral reefs so so this pink stuff is the coral okay all right so as time goes by weight of the island and the weight of the coral press the island down it back into the seafloor. When I first heard that I was like, what? But that's what happens. As the island begin oh sorry. As the island begins to sink um the 
let me let me get back to where I was. I gotta I gotta let it play a second. So there's my fringing reef as the island is pushed back down you can see that there's a shallow area that forms between the coral and the and the island and and this this shallow area is called a lagoon and that's one of the keys um for for defining the the next kind of reef called a barrier reef You've heard of the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. We talked about it a little bit. But but a barrier reef is when the island is sinking. It's a second stage. In island reef development. Um, as the island is sinking, the coral has to grow fast enough to keep up with the, the sinking island. And it turns out that this area, we'll, we'll talk about it in a little bit, but this crest this reef crest is where the coral grows the fastest and we'll talk about why in a couple of minutes but what happens is if it's growing the fastest out here the island is sinking as the island is sinking we form this shallow area called a lagoon and when you form this lagoon and this um, coral reef around the island like that you have a barrier reef okay let me keep it going Oh, he did it again. As the island sinks away, if the coral can continue to grow, you'll notice that we have these pieces that um, that are are above now above the island, and we have this shallow area all in here. This is one large lagoon, and if you look at these from from this vantage point then you can see that there are a group of there's a ring of islands that and we call this an atoll that's the third stage in island reef development is the atoll okay let me let me let this play for you to show you how it kind of works over time so here's our island the island forms fringing reef as the island sinks you get the barrier reef as the island continues to sink away you get the atoll okay um so fringing reefs barrier reefs and atolls were really stages of island reef development and it turns out that there was a pretty bright guy who came up with this you guys have heard of charles darwin he's the he's the the father of modern day evolutionary thought well he also was the first to to explain how coral reefs form and the different stages of coral reef development so this is um this is this is attributed to, to darwin's theory of coral reef development um so the like i said the newly formed volcanic island and submerged volcanoes eventually are populated by coral larvae because they provide a hard substrate um the larvae grow near the shore and form a fringing reef. So let me show you what a f well fringing reefs are the simplest and most common because they're also the youngest. And if the coral can't keep up with the if the coral growth can't keep up with the island sinking, then the fringing reefs um, expire. They die. So that happens periodically. So they are the most common of the of the, the of the coral reefs. They develop near shore in the tropics, which makes perfect sense, I hope. Um, they provide that hard surface for coral larvae to settle and grow onto. Um, the rocky shoreline is best because it provides that hard substrate. If coral larvae tried to settle into sand, as soon as the, 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 um, the sand grain was pushed over, the coral larvae would, would die. Um, but even if there's a little patch of hard bottom, coral larvae can settle down and make their own bottom so they can actually build up in areas that would that would be sand but they need some hard bottom first okay um fringing reefs grow in a band along the shore which makes sense that's kind of what we were saying before 
Uh, they occur close to landform borders, uh, borders along the shoreline. That makes sense. Um, an example of fringing reef would be the Hawaiian reefs. Um, you know that Hawaii is still active. There's volcanoes in Hawaii. And because the Hawaiian islands are fairly new geologically, their, their fringing reefs are populated by corals. And, and so that's, that's what we have, a fringing reef. Let me show you what a fringing reef would look like. So, so what we have here is, if this is the island, Right, and we have the beach, and then and then this kind of shallow um, um, gentle slope is the reef flat. Okay, and then and then as you go a little farther, it's it get you reach this. This is the reef crest. Okay, the reef crest is where it starts to drop off. And then we have the drop off, which is the reef slope. And then down at the bottom is sediment, rubble, and things from all the corals breaking off and such. The, um, this can get fairly deep out here, um, but but the coral grows best right along this reef crest. Okay. So I you have this picture in your guided notes. Uh, let me see. Okay. So... This is a picture I took in Bonaire. This is actually Captain Don's uh, habitat, which is um, in 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 Bonaire, and this is the reef flat. And you can see there's not a whole lot of live coral here. There's some, and there are some fish. This this line is for people to um, check out their buoyancy and make sure that they know what they're doing before they um, before they venture out into the reefs on their own. Uh, it also helps people to find their way back to Captain Don's if you're down in the deep end, you know, in the, in the, in the bottom of the reef slope. And so, but I just wanted you to see what, what the reef slope would look like. Over here is the crest, right, right along this edge is the crest. And it, it, it varies. Um, it's probably a few hundred yards offshore in Bonaire, but it depends on where you are. Um, so the reef flat, is the widest part. It's pretty shallow. Um, we're in in Bonaire. What you were just looking at is probably somewhere between 15 and 25 or 30 feet deep, and then the drop off goes. You know, hunt can go hundreds of feet deep. Um, sometimes parts of it are exposed at low tide. On some reefs in Bonaire, that that was not. Um, there's a fairly gentle slope, like I said. Um, and it's really strongly affected by sediments because as material comes in, the reef itself is protecting the, the, the inner part, the reef flat from, from, um, waves and things. So there's not a lot of water exchange. Okay. So there's not as many colonies or different kinds of, of corals on the, on the, uh, reef flat. The reef slope is where we get most different kinds of coral and the most numbers of coral colonies. So the reef slope, okay, so let's just make sure we got this. Um, we have, we have the island and then let's, let's call this the waterline, right? We have the island and we have this reef slope, uh, I'm sorry, the reef flat and then you have this reef slope. Okay. And it's, it's, I'm making it probably a little more, but not a whole lot more uh, steep than it really is. So, so this is the reef flat. This is the crest. This is the reef slope. Okay. So, so the reef slope is pretty is pretty steep. Okay. Um, it. It, the reef slope is where there's the most amount of coral and the most amount of kinds of coral. Okay. Which most species. Uh, the reef crest is the shallow edge of the reef slope. And this is where it's really populated. Um, where, because you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get this protection somewhat. You get this, you, you still have, um, water flow. You still have a lot of oxygen, a lot of, a lot of zooplankton. So they're, they're a lot of light, you know, 
Remember we said that corals need light because of the zooxanthellae. So down here isn't as much light as up here. Okay. Um, as let me let me get this out of your way. As sediment and coral pieces tumble down the reef slope, they settle at the base. Okay. As it builds up, organisms grow on it. Um, so the bottom is usually flat, covered with sand or mud. Um, when you see the, I think you might have seen pictures of the garden eels. That was at that was at the base of the of the reef was the base of the reef slope. Um, there is an incredible variety of life in coral reefs. The richest and most complex of all marine ecosystems are the coral reefs. Okay, uh, so the most rapid growth occurs on the outside of the reef. We just talked about it. We say why? Well, there's a lot of good circulation of water which brings fine sediments away it also brings zooplankton to the to the outside of the reef um, which is the food and oxygen because of this good circulation okay so I, th I think in your in your notes you have to write good circulation zooplankton which is the food and oxygen are the reasons why the outside of the you know the reef crest grows the best Okay. Um, as waves and and currents and things go across the reef, they break pieces off, move them down slope, and more coral establishes on the debris at the bottom. Okay. Uh, the weight of the reef and the volcano depress the ocean floor and sink the island, like I was saying before. And if the upward growth, if the growth of the coral co uh, colonies can exceed or maintain or stay the same as the sinking rate. The coral stays where it is. If it doesn't, it, it dies. The coral reef dies. Okay. Um, as the island sinks away, the large corals die and are covered over, and it creates a lagoon, that, that shallow area um, where it's pretty protected, but there's not as much circulation. Delicate corals can form there and survive in the shallow protected lagoon. Um, things like, like the staghorn corals that you saw and Alcorn corals, those those are fairly delicate because they're branched, um, so they can survive in the shallow protected lagoons. When you get that lagoon, yet you have a barrier reef, okay. And so this is where I want you to label your your um, your in your notes the the. Let me write these. So so this is the lagoon. Okay, it's that shallow area. This is a barrier reef. But if you can if you can understand the barrier reef, then the other two are, are pretty straightforward. This is the back reef slope. This is the reef flat. Okay, because this is that gentle sloping flat area, right? This you should know by now this is where it goes from the reef flat down is the crest, the reef crest. And then this is the four reef slope. And the four reef slope means means in the front, right? Back reef slope is in the back. So this is out toward the ocean. This is the island, okay? So I think you have to label those on your in your notes. I'll give you a second. Okay? You might want to pause if you if you're not done and then pick it back up again. Okay. So, moving along. So the barrier reef is farther offshore. Um, it's separated from shore by a lagoon. Um, the Great Barrier Reef of Australia is the largest single biological feature on Earth. Well, I showed you, you can see it from space. That's pretty big. Okay. So, smaller barrier reefs are common in the Caribbean, fairly common in the Caribbean, um, but, but, um, they're not as common as the fringing reef. Okay. So, if we keep going, Further sinking of the island can leave behind a chain of low-lying 
atoll islands, coral atolls, and you have a, a ring of islands. Um, so atolls are ring-shaped reefs from which a few low islands project above the sea surface. Here's the drawing of it, and you can see. Okay, so let me let me draw in here. So the island is probably here-ish. Okay, so this was is all coral material. As the island sank away, the coral atoll forms. Okay, over geologic time, as the ocean levels change, these then become exposed, and you get these this ring of low-lying islands, the atoll. And in here, we have a, a lagoon that's in between all these islands. So, so the, in the middle of the ring of islands is the shallower area, the, the lagoon. Okay. We still have the four reef slope. We still have the back reef slope. We still have this reef crest. It's not as pronounced, but we have this, this, um, reef flat. Okay. And the reef crest. So, all right, let's see. Sorry. There's the, there's the, a picture of an atoll. That's Salvat in the, in the Pacific. And you can see these islands. Okay. And you can see that this is a lagoon. This is the back reef slope. The four reef slope is in here. Okay. 